This year, the world has lost more music artists than ever before. And no loss is felt more in the country music community than that of the great Merle Haggard. For most of the country music singers today, Merle Haggard defines country. They listened to his music, mimicked his writing and singing style, and hope that one of their songs might one day be compared to The Hag. Greatness like this doesn't come along very often. Here at Country's Family Reunion, we believe in bringing honor to whom honor is due. And setting aside a time to remember Merle Haggard is at the top of that list. Merle had agreed to be on this series, but sadly went home on his 79th birthday. This series is our tribute to him. All three of his sons are here, as well as a ton of his friends and fellow artists, and hosted by Whispering Bill Anderson. Together, they remember Merle Haggard as he really was. A father, a friend, a great songwriter, and of course, one of the biggest legends in country music history. Welcome to Country's Family Reunion Tribute to Merle Haggard. Terrific, the Isaacs. Ben, yes, sir. We we've got to figure out a way to get a close up on this on the base here. It's upside down. Now, here, yeah, it's upside down, but that's all right. We can we can still kind of make it out right there. Now, you've had this base for how long? Well, I, I my dad bought this base for me to start playing when I was about 15 years old, so 30 years. Well, you can't read it, I'm sure, from back there, but upside down. Merle Haggard autographed this particular bass right here. Somebody with a camera get a close-up on that. What, what was the occasion that you got him to do that? Well, I have a, I have a habit of, of collecting autographs of people that I, I loved all my life working with in the studio. And when we did the, the bluegrass sessions that he was talking about, I got to play bass on that, and uh, he honored me with his autograph, so. 
Well, I've seen a lot of Merle Haggard autographs, and that, that is it. That's the That's legitimate it. one. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't fake that. That's very special. You guys are so great, and I, I loved your, your version of his great song. Thank you, Bill. I just wanted to say that it's such an honor to be here to uh, honor Merle Haggard. And I have to say something, because I grew up in New York City in the Bronx, and I grew up listening to the Beatles and to uh, Peter, Paul, and Mary and Simon and Garfunkel. But everybody in the world always heard an Okie from a Skokie. So I knew Merle Haggard from that song. <laughs> and hearing all these wonderful stories, I'm just so educated today. It's a beautiful time. Well, we're glad y'all could, could be a part of this. I was thinking about when we were choosing the song to sing. Um, first of all, that song is just perfect for harmonies. And um, so we wanted to do it. And... I love that song because, you know, Christmas time is supposed to be a joyful, fun time, but for, not for everybody. It it's, can be a very sad and depressing time uh, when they don't have the money, just as the song talked about, to buy gifts for their family and loved ones, but especially when you've gone through a loss. And I know that this Christmas is going gonna, gonna to be hard to hear that song. Um, this December. I hadn't thought about that. Thank you very much. Thanks for making me cry. <laughs> well, I did, and for all of us. Uh, all right, you well, and Vince get together and make everybody cry. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Crying 101. Um, but no, we'll be thinking about you all this bless Christmas, and we'll be praying for you guys because I know that it'll be it'll be one of those times. It'll be bittersweet. And so, oh, but um, yeah. it's very special for you to say, Ronnie. You wanted to say something about uh, about Ben's. Mama and Merle Smith. I did. I wanted to uh, give a shout out to Teresa Haggard and uh, Mama, to Ben and Janessa. We know that uh, these are hard times for her. She just lost her best friend, but we hope she finds some comfort in the love that's in this room uh, for your dad and, of course, her husband. So, thank you so much. Big shout out to Teresa. Thank you, Ronnie. Absolutely. I stand corrected on something, and I'm going to get Buddy Cannon to. Uh, to correct me because, um, Jim, when you sang A Boys on a Mountain When I Fall, I credited Merle with writing that, and Buddy's telling me that he Chuck. did not write that. Chuck, Chuck Howard. Howard. Chuck Howard. Chuck Howard actually right, wrote yeah. always. But, I mean, again, you're talking about your dad's great ears. To, I mean, that song sounds like he would have written it. Right. Yeah. It just yeah. sounds like him. Yeah. That's amazing. Merle can turn any song into a Merle Haggard song. <laughs> I was there when Buddy was doing uh, Family Bible. And the whole world knows Willie wrote it. But when Merle was singing it, it sounded like Merle wrote it. I, was, I told Buddy, I said, it's, I told Merle, I said, it sounded like he wrote that, that song. It was so Merle Haggard. Well, that's what a true artist can he do. Was that. Anybody can trace a picture, it takes a true artist to paint one. And that man was a true artist. Absolutely. Mo Bandy, you've been talking to us a little bit, but you yes. have a song for us. I do have a song. I want to say what a pleasure it is to be here. What an honor. And see the Haggards here, just really neat. And I, I traveled to Europe with Merle, did all the Mervyn Kahn stuff with him years ago. And I, I saw him. Am I supposed to get up and go over there or sit here? You're yeah. going over there since I got up. <laughs> One way or the other, you're going. <laughs> You'll be okay. Am I like okay, Gene? Okay, You'll be okay. okay. But anyway, I, uh, I saw Merle, I think, one of the greatest concerts I've ever seen with him, uh, live at Billy Bob's. I was there that night, and, man, he was on it. And what a thrill it was. And we used to play the bars down in Texas, and we'd fight over who got to do the new Merle Haggard song. And... Uh, I didn't get whipped too much, but I, I missed a How couple How many of people them. did you have to whip to get to do today? I started loving you again today. Man, I had to whip some of them little bitty ones. Cause that's <laughs> all I but I, I love this song. I am just, it's one of my favorite songs. I hope I can do it justice. You can. Like what a do. great story about uh, Bonnie telling him to turn the line around and uh, not I started loving you again today. Yeah, but and, and he only wrote a, a verse and a chorus. It was only a two-minute song, and it was the B-side of a record. Yeah, it was the B-side of, uh, I think, Bonnie and Clyde. or is it, it, was. What it was. Yeah. You know, she, she had her own uh, shorthand that she'd come up with because he'd write songs so fast that so many, uh, that's what I, uh, I heard, that she had her own shorthand, that, you know, and then she would cipher that later, you know. Somebody told me one time that they wrote it on, she wrote it down, I guess, on the back of a hamburger sack or something. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure it would yeah. yeah. A brown sack, yeah. 
Well, we you know, I wonder where that sack would be today. What it be worth? <laughs> sack <laughs> sack yeah. probably worth at our age, probably pretty low. I don't, <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, you know, a lot of things. You know, we're singing all these big hit songs of my dad's, and um, but I don't think a lot of people realize that um, some of his probably considered to be classics never were singles at all. <coughs> to Death Star Loving Again was a, back, a B side back when they did the A B side thing to Bonnie and Clyde. And Silver Wings was never a single at all. And that's considered to be a Merle Haggard classic. Well, I don't think Footlights was ever a single. No, it wasn't. Uh, again, you know you're really good when your album cuts are classics. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty powerful. Mo, lay it on us. All right. Today I started loving you again I'm right back where I've really always been And I got over you just long enough to let my heart ache mend And today I started loving you again What a fool I was To think I could get by With only these few million tears I cried should have known the worst was yet to come and the crying time for you it just begun cause today I started loving you again I'm right back where I've really always been And I got over you just long enough to let my heartaches mend Then the day I started loving you again Absolutely, singing a country song. Nobody sings them any better than uh, than Mo Bandy does. A lot of heart in this song. Tony Booth, bless your heart. You came all the way up here to be with us, and uh, been pretty quiet over there. You you live in California, right? Or do you live back in Texas? Now? No, I'm in Texas. Okay, I, I was there for a while. But in in your California days, were you were you in Merle Close? Did y'all hang out? Did you tour? Uh, we didn't hang out together, but I knew Merle early on. And uh, matter of fact, when, when I met him, uh, Bonnie was in the band. 
I ran into him at the Nugget there in Vegas. And uh, we kind of lost track of each other. I moved to Texas and he stayed in California. But uh, I used to run around when I was single. I'd, instead of going back home after a gig, I'd hook up with a capital rep and make their runs and hit all the radio stations and stuff. Because back east, I didn't get, it was cheaper to get an act out of Nashville than it was out of Bakersfield. So I get to meet them disc jockeys. And I wound up in, uh, in Detroit. And Cobo Hall that night was Freddie Hart, Merle Haggard, and Ray Price. I mean, you know, <laughs> and to make the day really complete, I had a friend that was a disc jockey in Detroit, and he fixed me up with a Playboy bunny <laughs> from the Detroit club. So I asked her if she'd like to go see a country music show, and she said, yeah, which kind of surprised me when I found out she was from North Carolina. So we go out there, and... And Freddie said, you know, if I'll let you get up and sing Keys in the Mailbox if you do harmony with me on Easy Lovin'. I said, man, there ain't no way I can, I don't have no falsetto at all. Never did. So blew that off. And so I took her and we went out and got on Merle's bus and visited with him for a while. And came back inside and they had a little seating thing next beside the stage. And I said, why don't you sit here and listen to the show? I want to run back and say hi to Ray. You know, Ray's my hero. So. And uh, man, I got to talking to Ray and I forgot everything. <laughs> I went back out and she was gone. <laughs> but it was worth it, you know, to hear Merle and, and uh, Ray and, you know, I'd do it all over again. Was my dad Ed gone Are too? Are you saying that's my mother? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was not gonna bring that up. <laughs> Did she have blonde hair? <laughs> I'm the only blonde in the family, I just wondering how that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, uh, David alluded to it earlier, you know, the, on the uh, Irma Jackson. And Merle wanted to do it, but they, the Capitol people was afraid it would be harmful to his career, you know, about an interracial love song. But it was just the perfect vehicle for the first record for a guy that's wanting to make some noise and create a little controversy. And sure enough. Uh, they, so uh, you recorded it before Merle did? Yes. Uh, as far as I know, I had the first record on it. And then Don Sutton, the great baseball player for the Dodgers, during the offseason, he was a disc jockey at, in Burbank on KBBQ. And, and he told me that they used to get death threats at the, at the radio station over that song. So well, I remember, Tony, I recorded, and, not, no, and, and nobody cared about my career. I just, <laughs> <laughs> you was probably already established. <laughs> But it was a great song, especially it was great when Merle sang it. Yeah, well, Just yeah. kill me when Merle did yeah. it. Now, I wonder with the way times have changed, I wonder if a song like that would be more accepted today than it was Oh, I'm sure, back yeah. Then. Probably be Kenesha Jackson, though, instead of Irma. <laughs> <laughs> Kenesha. <laughs> she 99. <laughs> she 99 Shaniqua, Jackson. Whatever. <laughs> you know, Bill, getting back to, you know, how we all love Merle so much, um, years ago, uh, a woman I was going out with, with she broke up with me, and I was just devastated. And this uh, sound man, buddy of mine, said, you know, was trying to cheer me up. So he invited me to this party. And so I went, and he was trying to introduce me to this lady. And, and then she uh, offered, me to, offered to drop me off where I was living. So I said, okay. So we got in the car, and, and um, you know, I was just kind of still kind of blue. And she, she said, let's see what we got on the radio here. So she turned on the radio, and there was this live Merle Haggard show. And I just thought, I, all of a sudden, I came alive, and I thought, you know what? This is going to be okay after all. You know, she seems pretty nice. And then all of a sudden, she said, oh, we can do without that. <laughs> <laughs> and so all of a sudden, it was like... <laughs> So I just got her to drop me off. I said, thank you. It was nice to meet you. Have a good life. Yeah. Was she a Playboy bunny from Detroit? Yeah. I, I didn't get to find out. If she didn't like Merle Haggard, I wasn't interested. Well, if she didn't like Merle Haggard, you didn't need to hang out with That's her right. anyway. That's right. Tony, how about a song? All right. Dallas Wayne, you play a lot of Tony Booth's music on Willie's Roadhouse, because I hear it a lot. We love Tony. We love, we love all these artists that are here today. It's the amazing part of it. 
This is, this is a cornerstone of what we do. They all sang all the ones I know already. I just hope I remember this one. We met downtown in a bar room. Both of us needing a friend. You brought me home to your doorstep. It was there you invite me in We spent the wee hours dancing To your favorite home stereo sound We talked about what we'd been needing Discussing our ups and our downs And I've had a beautiful time to mine You poured out your feelings while I poured the wine I've had a beautiful time Size me a bride. There's somebody home and she's waiting. She's probably been waiting up all night. And I can't say I found any answers. You listen while I rattle on. You've been a beautiful lady and kept me from being alone. Beautiful time Holding your body close to mine You poured out your feelings While I poured the wine I've had a beautiful time Yes, I've had a beautiful time Holding your heart next to mine We poured out our feelings did we pour the wine? I've had a beautiful time. I poured out my feelings. Then we poured the wine. I've had a beautiful time. Fine job, brother. Oh, good job, brother. Tony Booth. Merle did write that one, right? Yes. I think Freddie Powers was co-writer on it. Was he, Ronnie? Yeah. I think he was. Yeah. yeah, Freddie did. Is that one of the ones you sang on? Were you on that? No, uh, Freddie actually did that one with Merle. I had already left. It was probably in the mid-'80s when that one yeah. was. Yeah, that's when Clinton Strong was playing electric for him. Uh, had taken Roy's place. Yeah. It was an interesting period. Uh, Leona was still there, wasn't she? I think so. Yeah. It's hard to keep up with his women. <laughs> he was he was married five know. times. I had one for every finger. <laughs> I'll let you pick whichever finger you want for whatever. <laughs> Go in there. <clears throat> one of the one of the, Merle wrote so many not only great songs but he wrote so many beautiful melodies. Oh God! Uh, I mean everything. I mean we're all sitting in here singing. I've had a beautiful. Oh, yeah. Everybody say his memories and his melodies were so memorable. Uh. Is what I was going to say. The band, and we've all been uh, applauding them and uh, commenting and commending them on a great job. They've got an instrumental version of a great Merle Haggard classic. I don't know how you picked this particular one, but you couldn't have chosen a prettier one. All right, here's Dirk and Mike and Hank and David and Jimmy and Les and John. Silver Wings. <laughs>
So good. So good. Family Reunion Band, I guess, is the name of the group. They're terrific. I can't hear that song without hearing Bonnie's voice. I know. Her voice was just, it just cut through so beautifully on that record. And Bonnie had a unique voice. She was, boy, it was more of a duet team almost. You know, can't really imagine Dad's older records, especially without <laughs> Bonnie. You know, and again, a lot of people don't realize that Glenn Campbell was the man singing the male part on all that stuff. On all of it? All of it. Up till, Glenn sang all the way up till 72. He sang on um, Carolyn, and Glenn was already a superstar. Can I tell you a quick story about Glenn? <laughs> Glenn was, I, I met him first time on, when they were cutting Mama Tried, and he'd come and sing his harmony parts on that. And uh, but Glenn had just got him a record deal with Capitol, and I, I, I would imagine that his uh, work with my dad is what, you know, Ken, Ken Nelson and all that stuff. They, uh, anyway, they signed Glenn to a record deal. And I was there when he brought the, uh, by the time I get to Phoenix to my dad, my dad was kind of like a big brother to him, I think. And, um, but, and Glenn played um, my dad by the time I get to Phoenix. And um, he asked him, what do you think about that, Merle? And he said, well, it's a, it's a hit record, Glenn. He said, well, Capitol Records ain't doing nothing with it, man. It's just sitting there. And he said, he said how did you guys do it, you know, back in the old days? Um, because you, you know, back in those older days, you could actually self-promote a little bit, you know, when you go around the radio stations and you could actually drum up a lot of interest in, on your own. Anyway, Dad said, well, bring 2,000 singles to Bakersfield and uh, we'll show you what we did. And uh, anyway, Glenn brought 2,000, by the time I get to Phoenix, singles to Bakersfield. And out of the garage, Fuzzy Owen, Bonnie Owen, and my dad and Glenn packaged up 2,000 um, singles for the radio stations in America. And my dad wrote a little handwritten note in each one of them, asking the radio station, please give this a listen. He was an established artist. And do me a favor and please give this a shot. Well, and at the end of that year, it was by the time I get to Phoenix and today I start living again, fighting all year long for that number one spot. And, but that's how Glenn got to start right there. Wow. That's a neat little story. What a it? nice thing for your dad to do. Well, Glenn Campbell's a wonderful man. and. Um, and my dad and him have been friends, and he was as part of my, my dad's sound as Bonnie was. You know, and he did all that great acoustic work too, by the way. Like um, Sing Me Back Home, you know, that great intro on that, and the intro of the, what sounds like an acoustic guitar on Mama Tried. That, um, that's actually Glenn playing a, um, a dobro with acoustic strings on it, capable down to the fifth fret. And, um, but Glenn was a big part of my dad's sound, and my dad was a great big part of his career. Appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, absolutely. I didn't know that, yeah. Gene Watson. Yes. We desperately need a Gene Watson song. Well, I wanted to sing Harmony with Mo. I told him, I said, I was thinking about singing Harmony with you, and he said, how long you been thinking that? <laughs> <laughs> he hurt my feelings, and I backed out. I told him to <laughs> quit thinking so much. You know? <laughs> they're, they're, they are the modern-day uh, Glenn and Merle, right? <laughs> Gene Watson and Mo Bandit. Well, Don't I'll have the words you, before you fell out. This, this is this is a hmm. Nah, it's uh such a pleasure being here. You know, Merle was always one of my idols. I used to listen to everyone back in the day, and, and a, of a whole lot of Lefty Frizzell. I thought he was way before his time, and 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 when Merle came along, well, that kind of put the icing on the cake for me, and and uh, I idolized this guy. You know, for years, and funny thing, I was up here uh, looking for material, and, and some of my favorite writers, Dave Kirby, Warren Robb, and uh, Joe Allen, and they came to me and said they had this song, and they said, you know, Merle recorded this, but he hadn't released it, and, and you know, uh, we own the session. If you'd like to sing it, well, you'll already have the session. So I said, sure. He said, we'll have to take Merle's vocal off of it, so we did over at Sound Emporium. So I sung it. I brought Sonny Garrish in to play steel on it because there wasn't no steel. And we got through cutting it and everything. Jim Williamson was the engineer. And we started pulling up the tracks. And uh, when you pull them up to where you need them to be, you could hear a ghost of Merle in there singing, you know? And what was so wild about it is we didn't even know there was background vocals on it. And Jim got to messing with it and pulled up the tracks and the background vocals were spot on with what I was doing. And we just released it that way in one of our albums called The uh, Sun Never Comes Up Again. It's a great song. What, that was one of those kind of eerie stories right there, but I wouldn't take nothing for it. 
I'm going to try to sing a song that I feel like is vintage Merle. And, boy, I made a living off him for a long time. If we can get the boys going, I'm going to try it. Listen, when, when they first gave me the list of songs everybody was going to do today, I'm thinking, golly, look at all those songs. And then soon we got to talking about all the ones that weren't on the list. There's as many great Merle Haggard hits that we didn't do almost as, as we did. Vince, you got a Merle Haggard favorite song that hadn't been done today? Just sit up there and do two lines of it. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I can't you, want to. I can't be myself. <laughs> I Can't Be Myself is one of my favorites, you know, holding things together. I, I like, Always on a mountain. We didn't, nobody's done that. Misery and Jim. Always on a mountain. Yeah. That's, oh, no, uh, that's, no, uh, Old Man from the Mountain. I'm sorry. Old yeah, Man from the Mountain. Knew there's a mountain in there somewhere. <laughs> did you? Do you I know it? No, I don't. Bill, good. <laughs> wake up, just don't lay there like cold granite stone. That's that the way is love one goes. one of the finest yeah. lines ever yeah. sung in country music as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the way love goes. High on oh. a hilltop. Mm -hmm. That's a great one. That's another good one. You know what? There were was, there was so many great songs. I think we ought to all get together again next week <laughs> and do part two. Yeah. If we didn't even, you know, there, we'd have to do two or three of these. Right. Who else knows thinks so? Well? I was going to ask, I remember when Jack Green and I were working together, and sometimes... Uh, they would want us to do a show and then a, sec a dance set or something. And we all, we all hated them until we hit on this. Let's do a dance set and we'll do all the things, things we like to sing, all the boys. So we did Haggard songs. <laughs> the whole dance set would be Merle Haggard. 
I just wondered if anybody else did that on any of their shows, because we got tired of doing our own stuff, so it was great to do another set. I do three or four every show. It's, it's yeah. Remember one, in my next life, I want to be your hero. Max D wrote that. Yeah. Max D. Barnes wrote that. Yeah, holding things together song. was always yeah. one of my yes. favorites. That's the one I was thinking about. What yeah. about Somewhere Between? Yeah, yeah Somewhere Between. You know, Working Man Blues? I think one of his best songs that was never a single was Shelley's Winter Love. Shelley's Winter Love. Yeah. You remember that? Yes. Yeah. That was never a single? Nope. Nope. I didn't realize that. It's a wonderful song. Ben, let me, let me talk to you just a little bit because you, you hadn't been able to get a word in a couple times. I don't talk. Guys. <laughs> talk to me about The Strangers and what is happening with The Strangers now and what's going to happen in the future. And, of course, the Merle Haggard Band, The Strangers. Well, uh, about a week before my father passed, he uh, had a real sincere talk. And uh, he said, I'd be a fool if I didn't take the strangers and go play. Talking, talking to talking you. about me. He said that, and he also said that he would pass away on his birthday. And he did, and I figured he was so right about that, he couldn't be wrong about what he told me. Um, so we went out and did a few days with Willie, and um, that turned out wonderful, and hopefully we could do a little more. Now, are you stepping out front now and, and I'm fronting the band? I'm stepping out front, the front as I can get. <laughs> right. But you've never done that before, you said. Until four days ago. <laughs> four days ago, we did it the first time. Goodness gracious. Well, are you keeping all the same players? or? Uh... Well, we might have to get rid of Norm Hamlet. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Norm ain't been there long enough, yeah. has he? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Norm got hooked on that cocaine or something. <laughs> Well, now, Noel, are you are you and Marty, are y'all going to be involved in that? These guys don't want to work with me. I don't know what the heck. He, I, Noel's working with him. I'm trying to uh, help out my little brother. Marty's so busy, we can't even hire him. So. <laughs> my schedule's really busy. Um, no. I think, I'm going to stick with uh, this morning. Who's, and Marty gonna do his Vince, thing. we were talking earlier when Lyle Lovett said that Julia Roberts was the hit he never had. You know, he got up a lot of work being with her. And, you know, Dad, he left a message for all of us. If you can make any money off this, make it. Now, like I told you earlier, I've had my own career my whole life and done fine and was always comfortable, but I, I purposely started doing a little tribute to Dad and over the last three or four or five years. And, um, you know, again, he was healthy at the time, and I sure didn't expect him to up and die on us. And um, so I was already in place doing what I'm doing right now, what we're doing today. And, um, you know, and I guess Dad's dying was the hit I never had because my schedule has absolutely exploded. It's... Um, my dates, I'm busy from now until the end of next year, packed. And it's coming in in mass quantities. And um, so I guess he was the hit I never had. Wow. You go overseas a lot, don't you? I just got back from Ireland and England. And I'm love, I love it, but it's, it's, it still ain't home. You know, America's still the greatest nation on this planet. Okay. Where do you live? I live in Doyleen, Louisiana, a town of about 800 people, 20 miles east of Shreveport, Louisiana. My wife was born and raised there. And um, we live right next door to the graveyard. Just, I only have six more feet left to fall. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Marty, it was 801, but I left. <laughs> <laughs> but they run him off. I hear you guys have got an incredible arrangement. And it just, I hope, goes on and on and on. You know, Sonia Isaacs mentioned a while ago, said so many of Merle's songs were so short. Yeah. They were. Well, that was in the day when, you know, you had to kind of keep your records short, you know, for the disc jockeys and stuff. But I hear y'all have got a version of this that just rocks on and on, and I want y'all to share it with okay. us. Okay, you bet. And it's been so great to have Marty and Noel and Ben Haggard here today. Thank y'all so much for sharing your thoughts and your feelings and your memories. Work, 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 work. <laughs> now stay over there. No, if they won't let you in the band, you can do comedy anywhere you want to go. You, st you get over there and stay oh, there. Oh, it's over here? Yes. Yeah. Don't touch me no more. Don't look at me. <laughs> don't even talk to me. Keep your fingers off. That'll hey, be... don't look at me either, by the way. Yes, I kick it, huh? Yes, you do. Just bam. You guys ready? <laughs> Yeah. 
get by now, kids in a while. Yeah, but I've been working, man, dang near all my life, but I'll keep on working. Yeah, as long as my two hands are fit to use. Drink my beer in a sing a little bit of these working man blues. Sometimes I think about leaving, do a little bumming around. Throw my beers out the window, catch me a train to another town, but I go back working. Gotta buy my son a brand new pair of shoes. Yeah, we can drink a beer in town, sing a little bit of this working man blues. Yeah. I said, hey, hey, the working man, working man like me. Never been on welfare, that's the one place him and I be. He'll be working. Lost by two hands of fit to use. I'll drink my beer in this tavern, crowd it'll be these working man blues. somewhere on all the great things that have been said and sung today. Thanks to everybody for being here. Thanks to all of you folks for watching. We'll see you next time on Country's Family Reunion.